Hi, I'm Chris, welcome to this video guide about tank. I hope you are comfortable to see this little tank guide that I have prepared. First of all, what is the main role of the tank? Well, generate aggro and make the boss focus on us while we survive his attacks. Obvious, right? Continuing with this idea, all the classes in the game can play the role of tank if they are used correctly. But there are still the classes that can use shield, one-handed sword, knuckles, bow gun, and staff that dominate the tank meta. Since they possess abilities to completely reduce damage to zero, interrupt effectively, stun, flinch, and tumble, and reduce the aggro generated by party mates making the job easier. First of all we must have 255 points in MTL, but why MTL? MTL gives us 3.4% resistance to ailments for each point, having 255 would be a total of 75% ailment resist. Adding 25% between equipment and avatar stats we will reach 100% ailment resist and we will be immune to ailments. Followed by the MTL and regardless of the class you use, the tank in Torum can be classified in two ways. Pure tank uses MTL VIT stats focused on having a large amount of life and resistance in order to withstand large amounts of damage. Motion tank use MTL AGI VIT focused on speed to get to 10k ASPD becomes viable thanks to damage avoidance skills, but can be difficult to use. The skills vary depending on the weapon we use, but let's say that we still haven't decided which weapon to use, there are skills that are essential when tanking. Recovery, eliminates an ailment. Sanctuary, reduces the damage received by 90% if this damage is less than 10% of our maximum HP. Heal, heals us 3k of HP plus 20% of our max HP. Shield Cannon, deals 100% stun. Force Shield plus Magical Shield, Resistance passive. Protection plus Aegis, resistance buffs. Guardian, reduces aggro generated by allies and gives them AMPR. P. Defense, reduces all damage taken to zero. If you use Knuckles, you can replace P. Defense with Azura Aura, that makes us immune or energy control that has the same effect. Now let's talk about the function of the tank, which, as I mentioned before, is to generate aggro and survive. But what is aggro and how can we generate it? The aggro in simple terms is the threat that you generate to one or several targets making them attack you. For being the first person to attack the target you will generate 200 aggro, with each auto attack you make you will generate 10 aggro. You will also generate aggro based on the MP cost of the skills you use. Example, using Berserk which costs 500 MP will generate 500 aggro. This is where the combos come in, we will use the combos to generate the most aggro while spending the least amount of MP possible. I recommend combos with a buff party skill from open, in this way we will generate aggro to several enemies at the same time. Now how to survive against a boss. If you choose the motion tank you will have to survive with the skills that make you immune since reaching 10k of ASPD does not give a chance to put a lot resistances. On the other hand with pure tank we will fully receive the enemy's attacks. First of all let's talk about the types of damage that enemies can deal. To better identify them we can activate a very useful option to see what kind of damage we are receiving. We will see it in Config Chat Combat Log Damage Taken. So the types of damage are Physical Damage and Magic Damage. As the name implies they are both magical and physical damage types. To reduce the damage received by this part we will use equipment with their respective resistances. Fractional Damage it is the type of damage that we must take care of ourselves its damage is based on the amount of HP we have at the moment we receive it. For example this little mob has 100% fractional damage and when it hits me without any equipment it becomes fatal damage. This damage can be reduced with fractional barrier equipment but it is barrier, not resistance, it will reduce the first attack we receive but it will go on cooldown. Absolute ailment, having 100% ailment resist, we are immune to ailments, but not to absolute ailment. Some bosses have this feature of inflicting absolute ailment, 
Here the recovery skill comes into play that will remove the effect of the ailment. There is a wide variety of equipment that can be used for tank, but I consider that there are certain stats that are important to have which are 100% of ailment resist, remember that we have 75% of MTL, only 25% remains between equipment and avatars, super important to be immune to ailments. 100 to 125 critical rate since if we hit a boss and we do not have these CR values our attacks or abilities can fail. 3k from ASPD. It's not that important for some people but for me it is, I don't like a tank that is slow even if it is pure. But you can perfectly ignore this. Finally we cannot forget the resistances and the max HP trying to balance them as much as possible. You should not worry about the plus aggro percent since it is possible to tank without any of this stat, although it does not hurt. We must not forget to refine the equipment since it will reduce the damage we receive from any attack passively, refine reduction. I will be leaving on the screen the consumables that can be useful for tank. For land buff I preferably use ones that I can use for both DPS and tank. But if you will never do DPS or if you need it you can change the crit rate and the max HP for magic and physical resistances buff. I don't think I have anything else to comment on the tank, if you are looking for a specific guide or gameplay on a certain type of tank you can visit my channel. And if you're wondering why I left the bare hand tank completely out of this guide, it's because I plan to make a specific video about this class. Now I say goodbye. Any questions you can tell me in the comments and do not forget to subscribe and like the video, it is a great support for me.